Hello and welcome to my channel. This is my drawing of Jake Gyllenhaal as Prince Dastan in Prince of Persia, The Sands of Time. Colored pencils on sandpaper. Let's get to it. So this is another colored pencil portrait in a series of portraits I'm doing. Same size, same materials, colored pencils, uh, Faber-Castell polychromos colored pencils on a 1000 grit sandpaper. It's the same size, a slightly smaller size, but this time the uh, the portrait itself, the, the face, will be taking up a little bit larger portion of the paper. And I'm going to be I'm going to be using a little bit more of this dark pencil I'm using right now, uh, which is a dark sepia. I found it very useful here, and I probably should have used it a bit more instead of black in uh, some of the earlier drawings. But um, because this surface you know, takes layers very well, I can also just use black for some of the darker bits, like some of these darker lines that I already laid down when I was making this sketch. And I can just go over them with some, with some other colors to modify the tone. Anyway, the background here is going to be a desert setting, but it's going to be very vague and out of focus, uh, no shapes, no details or anything. It's just going to be the colors that are going to be suggesting that it takes place in a desert. So I started with some pinkish tones here and I'm going to be creating a sort of a transition from those uh, pinkish tones to the even lighter bluish tones at, uh, at the top and then maybe some yellowish ochre tones at the bottom. Uh, so I'm uh, laying down uh, those colors carefully because uh, this color is quite a bit lighter than the background color of my paper. So I need to make sure that I cover it thoroughly so that these darker bits don't uh, pop out of the lighter area. And I also need to do a little bit of blending uh, with a brush. I mostly use uh, flat bristle brushes, uh, but I use some of the other ones here and there as well. The thing with, uh, with, with blending with the brushes is that you can't really overdo it because then you will dig out the material out of the texture of the paper. Here I'm also using that bluish color pencil at the top. I believe this is uh, sky blue. And here in the lower part of the drawing I'm going to be um, putting in a little bit of ochre. First I drew some of those flyaway hairs or flyaway segments of his long hair because I was afraid that if I tried to put, put those in later they wouldn't be dark enough. So I'm just going to work around some of them and put some of them over the lighter background a little bit later. So I'm, I'm going to use a combination of these two approaches. And now I'm adding a little bit of ochre at the bottom. So I'm trying to achieve some uh, yellowish, brownish and pinkish tones here at the bottom. Something that kind of looks like desert colors a little bit. And then uh, making a transition towards the lighter bluish tones, sky blue tones at the top. But like I said, nothing specific. Uh, I'm not going to be drawing any details in the background. Uh, I just uh, want some nice colors for my desert setting and for this background. And uh, I'm going to be keeping those colors in mind when I start working on the face and the, and the main part of the portrait because I like to stay consistent uh, with the overall setting, with the overall col colors that I used uh, in my drawing. Uh, I'm going to start with some very dark colors here. I'm starting with a black colored pencil for some of the shadow areas uh, on the top of the head. And he has a side parting uh, with, with the hair swept to both sides. And then some long uh, waves kind of... Uh, some of those uh, longer segments of hair are kind of curling upwards <clears throat> a little bit. And then some flyaway hairs at the top. 
So a slightly messy uh, longer here and uh, for the lighter bits I'm also adding a bit of that dark sepia brown, walnut brown as well as uh, ochre at the very top to make the hair a little bit lighter at the top because that part of the head is uh, round and facing up towards the light source so uh, there, there are going to be some highlights there the, the hair is going to appear lighter there now the, the part of the hair here on the left needs to be a bit darker and I like the way that it stands out against that light, uh, lighter background it's always important to have uh, a nice contrast between the main subject and the background so that the, uh, that the main subject would stand out against the background. Here I just defined the eyebrows a little bit better using that dark sepia a little bit and then going over it with some brown and uh, after that I started working on the skin tone I started with some ochre and uh, that's the same color that I used for the background a little bit so I'm gonna have similar tones on his face as well but I'm gonna be modifying it with some other colors obviously so the middle part of the forehead is going to be a bit lighter because the forehead is also round so the parts of that uh, round part of the face which are further away from the light source and kind of tucked in behind here are going to appear darker while, while the middle part of the forehead especially the one at the top is going to appear lighter for the lighter parts of the forehead I used a bit of the cinnamon colored pencil and then on top of that I also used uh, some uh, light beige red to make the colors a little bit warmer and a bit more reddish here and there I also used some sanguine but now I'm moving in with this light beige red and uh, it's uh, kind of a light pinkish tone um, both this one and the cinnamon color that I like to use extensively when I draw faces are a little bit too cool for my taste that wa that's why I like to combine them with some considerably warmer colors I often use uh, ochre and a little bit of that sanguine which has some orangey tones in it and uh, in addition to that I can even add some touches of um, orange or cadmium orange or even cadmium red here and there but I'm not an expert on colors I'm just trying to do the best I can to make the try to make the uh, skin color kind of similar to my uh, reference but I don't really worry too much about making it exactly the same as the reference because I'm always going to be making some modifications to the colors uh, firstly the background and then I try to adapt uh, by kind of staying consistent with the colors that I used uh, for the overall setting so if the colors uh, are a little bit cooler which is going to be the case in my <coughs> in my drawing in comparison to the reference photo then I try to stay consistent with that. My reference is going to be included in the description if you want to check that out. And um, also uh, if you like this portrait you should check out my other, my previous color pencil portraits on this same surface. A few more words about the surface. This is just a regular sandpaper. It's, a, it's actually a waterproof sandpaper but it's a finer grit it's a 1000 grit uh, this is a sort of the sort of stuff that you can buy in a hardware store it's uh, pretty cheap but it works really well with both pastels and colored pencils the reason why I tend to prefer colored pencils most of the time is because you can work on these smaller details like for example I'm working on the eyes now 
Uh, you can work on these tiny details and produce some very fine, interesting looking textures. And also, these uh, colored pencils, especially these uh, polychromos oil based um, colored pencils, uh, are less prone to smudging. Uh, these polychromos ones are also a little bit on the harder side, which is not a problem on this surface because this surface really grinds down on the material and it's easier to cover large areas but uh, the point is that they uh, smudge considerably less than pastels so if you want something that's kind of cleaner and neater to work with and you don't have to worry about using fixatives uh, or how the fixatives will affect your artwork and whether it will smudge and how you will protect it then colored pencils are probably a better choice on this surface. I'm doing the nose area, drawing all, all of this with a lighter colored pencil. Uh, but always trying to make sure that I don't make uh, the nose appear too wide because uh, that sometimes happens if you don't shade the sides of the nose properly. And then I'm going to be making this transition towards the mouth area. But I just need to uh, make sure that I uh, put in enough sh uh, value in that shadow area of his eye sockets. For the mouth, for the lips, I used some more reddish tones. And uh, now I went back and just made some adjustments around the eye socket area because I felt that some parts of it, of it were a little bit too dark. So as before I'm starting with a little bit of ochre and sanguine, these slightly darker and warmer tones and then on top of that I put this, uh, this uh, cinnamon and light beige and uh, here and there in some of the lightest parts of the face I even used a touch of ivory colored pencil which is a little bit too light for skin color but if, I, if you use it sparingly for just a few highlights here and there it can work and of course I used some even lighter colors for the eyes he has some catch lights especially in the eye on the left which makes for a nice contrast with the pupil and the rest of the eye he has some kind of a scar here so I try to include that as well. Worked around it with some lighter pencils and used some slightly darker and uh, more reddish pencils for it. I don't know if it's a fresh scar or uh, what, I don't really remember uh, the, all of the plot of the movie. I have actually watched it and I thought that it was pretty good. I was actually pleasantly surprised by it because it's a very very entertaining action movie and I like Jake in this role um, kind of unusual but uh, I think it worked I think you should watch it if you ever have an opportunity so here um, it's, it's kind of a fantasy uh, movie about uh, about time travel, loyalty, uh, relationships between brothers and family members and things like that. Um, so here I, I'm putting in some even lighter colors at the top where the hair is supposed to be lighter because it's facing the light source. I used some of that cinnamon on top of the ochre. So the reason why that works here is yes, because I used similar colors in the background so I'm kind of staying consistent with the overall lighting and the overall colors in my scene. Here I'm working around these uh, segments of hair at the bottom because like I said I wanted to put in those uh, darker bits first and then work around them because sometimes when I put lighter colors uh, first the dark tones don't end up being not dark enough so sometimes when I want something to be uh, fairly dark I like to put in the dark colors first and uh, I have no problem using a black colored pencil 
even though some artists recommend against it, but uh, I actually like putting it down first uh, for some of the darker areas. And then if I need to modify the color slightly, I just go over it uh, with some other colors, controlling the amount of pressure and the amount of pigment I put down in the second layer. So I'm just uh, finishing the lips. The bottom lip is obviously going to appear lighter uh, than the upper one. And I'm just putting down some skin colors around the chin and uh, jaw area as well as above the upper lip so that I can start working on the facial hair. He has some mustache and some beard. Kind of looks um, unshaven here and messy. Uh, that's uh, the look they were going for, I guess, in the movie. Now, the interesting thing about facial hair is that uh, it's also a part of capturing the likeness of a person because different men have a different distribution of those facial hairs and what you'll notice uh, with Jake here is that uh, his beard grows kind of high almost uh, all the way up to his cheekbones and the same goes for the mustache area as well uh, it grows kind of high and wide uh, almost all the way to his cheeks. I used a little bit of this darker and warmer sanguine color here because there's, this is going to be a slightly darker part of the face. <clears throat> and I want some contrast with those, uh, with those uh, cheekbones which are supposed to be a lot lighter. Of course I added uh, some some of those uh, cinnamon and some other colors which I used on the top part of the face as well just to modify it a little bit and to create a similar color but slightly darker and now I'm just going to draw a lot of these short hairs for the beard and I need to make this nice transition from that dark shadow area uh, around his jawline towards the lighter area uh, on the cheeks. That's why I started uh, with a black color pencil at the bottom and then some some of that dark sanguine, uh, not dark sanguine but rather dark sepia and then uh, some walnut brown and then even some lighter colors and I threw in a few touches of uh, that cinnamon for some of the lighter hairs because his uh, beard is not uh, dark it has some brownish and even yellowish uh, tones here and there now I'm just making sure that I have enough of that hair uh, so that I can make it look realistic enough because I here I can't really just draw a few suggestions of hairs here and there. I'm not going to draw every single hair obviously but I have to have enough of them to make this look convincing and that's one of the things that makes uh, shorter hair as well as shorter beards more complicated to draw because you have a lot more work to do with longer hair you can actually get away with fewer strokes and more blending uh, when you have shorter hair you have to do uh, you have to pull way more of those short marks, short, short strokes uh, to indicate those shorter hairs. I'm wrapping things up uh, with the face and the hair and moving on to the clothes. Some interesting colors here. He has some kind of a, a red scarf and um, some, uh, I don't know, some greenish and brownish colors in there as well so I think they go well I think they go well uh, with the colors I picked for the background and the, and the face I'm just gonna do a little bit of soft uh, blending with that soft synthetic brush I put in those darker bits first using a black colored pencil to establish the larger shadow areas and the darker shadow areas 
and then I simply worked over that with a couple of reds and then some uh, greens and browns and ochres depending on which part of his clothes I was working on uh, but I'm just sort of wrapping things up here <clears throat> a little bit more green here uh, for his uh, robe or whatever whatever that is and kind of softening everything uh, with a brush uh, I want slightly uh, more of that rough texture and cleaner edges around the face and the clothes and maybe the hair doesn't have to have these clean edges and uh, that uh, rough texture I can soften that a little bit <clears throat> just finishing these uh, corners where I had a bit of that tape to secure the drawing and putting in some of the finishing touches the drawing is finished my signature is going to be here in the lower left corner and that's it, that's my drawing of Prince Dastan kind of looking into the distance I hope you like this colored pencil portrait don't forget to subscribe give me a like and comment my channel isn't doing that well these days so help me out and if you want to see more content and longer videos you can check out my Patreon bye for now